What's going on church fam? Welcome back to Everyday Church Life. I pray y'all are having a blessed day. So today we're going to be talking about three biblical ways to overcome guilt and shame. Let's get into it. Number one, find new identity. Second Corinthians 5 verse 17 say, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. One of the things you must do to overcome guilt and shame is to stop associating your past with the person you are today. Because who you were isn't who you are now. That's a mindset you must accept and believe. The reason why guilt and shame plague our lives at times is due to the problematic nature of survivor remorse, or some say survivor guilt. And this happens when you survive a traumatic experience that others didn't. So you start holding on to something you feel you deserve by making that pain a part of your identity. And the reason why it'd be so hard to let go because we feel as though if we do, we'll be losing a part of ourselves because we have made that pain a part of our identity. And so that's why we hold on to it thinking it's some sort of atonement for our sins or maybe the things that we went through in the past. So that's how we justify moving forward in our lives. But at the same time, we're not healing from what we have experienced because we're leaving that wound untreated. In other words, you start feeling like you don't deserve a better life. So to keep a balance there, you hold on to a particular pain or a traumatizing experience from your past to justify the life you have now. Today, God is saying, reach out to him because he wants to help you heal from your trauma in order for you to let go so you can move forward with your life. See, that's why Lord Jesus laid his life down. He didn't just lay his life down for people that may have an experience as much as you. He laid his life down for everyone that's facing some sort of problem that may have did things in their past. God say in the word, he make it rain on the just and the unjust. Therefore, we all have an opportunity to reach out to the heavenly father because he wants to help us heal from every single thing we may have experienced in life, big or small, it doesn't matter. God wants everyone to come to him. So that's why I also want to let you know, you're not alone. We all have experienced some sort of guilt and shame due to the mistakes we may have made. See, the testimonies of others sometimes help us heal when we realize we're not alone and that can help us overcome that guilt and shame, especially when they are a new creature in Christ showing no signs of their previous life and they go on to do mighty things for the kingdom of God. There are so many people in the Bible that made mistakes that they regret. But God didn't turn his back on them. He helped them because they opened their heart to God. So that's all God wants you to do is open your heart to him. And he will help you sort through these problems. So being around like-minded people that may have experienced a bad life in the past, but now they are new creatures in Christ can also help with your recovery, because that gives us hope to know that we too can change for the better. That's why God creates testimonies with people in order to provide hope for the hopeless. You too can have a better life. You too can change. You too can renew your mind. You too can have a new identity. It all starts with believing in Lord Jesus. He took on all the shame that was brought upon him by the cross in order for us to receive our salvation and be saved. No longer being a slave 
to sin or our past. So that's why it's so important that we find new identity in Christ because through his power is how we reinvent ourselves in order to improve our character development as the chapters of our life continue on. We have to believe wholeheartedly that God has forgiven us for our sins because that's why we're here today. The moment you confess to the Heavenly Father, the moment you accept Christ into your heart to be your personal Lord and Savior is the moment our character development begins to happen. And by the next chapter, we step into the newness of life, made new and completely washed from every single thing we have done. We find new identity. We are no longer who we once was. That brings me to number two, shift your focus. Philippians 4 verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Instead of focusing on negative thoughts, meditate on the goodness of God. Think on heavenly things that's above and not beneath. What helps me through life when I'm going through something that was unexpected, I always thank God for making a way through something that was out of my control because it could have been worse. This way of thinking helps me shift my focus, knowing that God is always by my side. He never abandoned me. And that's what I choose to believe. Because as humans, sometimes we hyperfixate on the bad more than the good. And that's what makes everything worse. So at the end of the day, it's all about perspective. View the entire situation. And instead of focusing on what's bad, find something good, even if it's something small. Because a small glimmer of hope is better than no hope at all. It's what you choose to believe that makes the difference. That's why I say, if what you're going through is proven to be that challenging, remember to never take your eyes off Lord Jesus. Because he will keep your thoughts in perfect peace when you focus on him. Because if you can't find anything good to focus on in a bad situation, Lord Jesus is always present. So focus on him because he's good and he's the one who has overcome all situations. And that's why he told his disciples to be of good cheer for he has overcome the world. So anything that you're struggling through, whether it be guilt or shame, Lord Jesus took on that battle for you when he laid his life down and was on that cross. See, guilt and shame sometimes come from the stuff that we try to do on our own. And it's the thought of failure that put us in a dark place because we may fail in the sight of the people that we was trying to prove wrong. That's why we must shift our focus because as a human being, we can't win them all. But through God, all things become possible. So that's why sometimes the Heavenly Father will allow us to experience failure in order for us to learn from that experience if we decide to study where we went wrong at so that we may improve in those areas of our lives. But in most cases, we go wrong when we decide to believe in ourselves instead of believing in the power of Christ. For example, there was this man in the Bible who needed deliverance for his son. And he asked the disciples to help him at first to cast out this evil spirit that was plaguing his son. And his disciples couldn't do it. They couldn't perform the task. So the man went to Lord Jesus and to make a long story short, 
Lord Jesus was able to cast out the devil that was plaguing that man's son. So the disciples asked Lord Jesus, why come it didn't work for us? And Lord Jesus said, because of your unbelief. So they fell in an area they thought they could excel in because of their relationship with Lord Jesus. And people saw this failure. So sometimes that can bring guilt and shame upon your life. But the reason why the Heavenly Father will allow that to happen sometimes is because he want us to put our trust in him. He want us to believe upon him, knowing that our help comes from above. God will give us the power to do something that was once impossible when we put our trust in him and Lord Jesus. We got to have faith. And that's how you prove what is good. And also, stop tracking your progress. Because if you stop tracking your progress, it becomes a lifestyle change instead of a chore that you have to do every week. Think about it. We don't like doing chores. Sometimes we can be lazy in doing what we have to do every single day. But if we just get up and do it by making it a part of our lifestyle, it becomes second nature. And over the course of time, it becomes something that we want to do instead of looking at it as a chore. So remember, you don't have to do nothing alone because God is always by your side. And the virtue of Christ will empower your faith to push through difficulties. So that's why you don't have to prove yourself to no one. Because at the end of the day, it's all about God's timing. So you just got to put your trust in God. So let the power of God flow through your life by putting your trust in him and his plan. Think upon his righteousness, his peace, his love, his faithfulness, his goodness, his temperance, everything that makes God who he is. Think upon those things because by you doing so, this will begin to shift your focus from guilt and shame to joy and peace of mind. Because you're no longer thinking about what made you guilty, what made you shameful. You're no longer thinking about the failures and the mistakes. You're thinking about the character of God. The more you keep your focus on God, the more you meditate while you're in his presence is the more you start to shift your thinking. And that's what you begin to identify with over the course of time. Instead of identifying with everything that makes you feel sad about yourself. That's why I said it'll shift your focus from guilt and shame to joy and peace of mind. The more you change the way you think. Change the pattern. And that brings me to the last one, but definitely not least. Number three, think of stuff you're grateful for. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18 say, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Write down every single thing that you could be grateful for. Like, what makes you happy? What puts a smile on your face? How has Lord Jesus impacted your life in a good way? If you could think of at least five things that you're grateful for, speak these truths over your life every single day. Because this will begin the process of changing how you feel about yourself. Once you realize I do have something to live for. So every time you think about something that makes you happy, that you can be grateful for, and you start showing gratitude, this is the will of God concerning you. See, what I'm discovering in life, when I do stuff that makes God happy, and when I show my appreciation, in return, God fills my heart. 
with his joy. Sometimes I can be just thanking God for a beautiful day or just thanking God for waking me up this morning. Knowing that I can do his will, then, then all of a sudden I feel this leap of joy in my soul. And it feels so good, it's, it's unexplainable. You can't really explain that feeling. But then, let's say I'm not having a real good day. And I start talking about all the stuff that makes me feel down. I begin to feel depressed. It lowers my countenance because of what I'm saying out of my mind. And that way of thinking travels with me throughout the course of the day. So it also goes back to number two, shift your focus. So instead of thinking about all the stuff I can be sad about, let me change my perspective and start thanking God for what I'm grateful for. Let me show appreciation. Let me show gratitude, knowing that God can pull me out of this situation that's trying to make me feel down. God can put me in a better mood if I continue to put my trust in him. These are things that I'm grateful for. I'm grateful that the Heavenly Father is in my life. Because through his power, that's how I got out of that dark place. Nobody lives a perfect life. There will always be a problem that we must face. With that being said, remember, remember what God has helped you with, not just in your past, but even now. If you were able to wake up this morning, that's a representation of what faith is. The word say. In Hebrews 11, verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We have hope for the future because God woke us up this morning. Although you couldn't see the hand of God over your life because sometimes when we're going through chaos, it's the stuff that's happening to us that's still in our focus away from God. But God has always been there. He's helping you get through it because you're still here today. You might couldn't see it back then, but today you can because you made it through. There is a problem that you was facing even last week and you thought you wouldn't get through it, but God showed up on your behalf. See, God is gonna even show up on your behalf to help you deal with this guilt and shame. But we also got to spend time with God because there's biblical principles that we can apply to our lives that help us get through that depression, that anxiety, that guilt, that shame. All of these negative feelings can literally be washed away if we give God our pain and believe in Lord Jesus Christ. See, without believing, without love, without having faith in the power of God, all of this stuff will be irrelevant to us. For example, if you hire a contractor to build you a house, but the person you hire don't have faith in his ability to build this house, would you trust them to build your house? No. So that's why if we don't believe in the power of God, how can we escape from these negative emotions, these negative feelings that we think in our minds? So if you want God to do a radical transformation from within your life, believe. That's what made every single thing that I said in this video relevant. It starts with our faith. How do we believe? How do we trust God? Are we finding new identity in Christ or are we continuing to live in the old, the former way of our existence? Are we finding things to be grateful for or are we complaining about our situation instead of doing something about it? And that's trusting God and his plan and wait on his timing, have patience. Are we shifting our focus on the problem or focusing on Lord Jesus. 
These are stuff that we got to ask ourselves because God has the answers if we choose to believe that his word is true in our lives. These are three biblical ways to overcome guilt and shame. I pray this word bless you in Jesus name. Amen. I love y'all. John 8 verse 36. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Just got to believe.